ready to our March 20th uh, Palos Verdes Democrats meeting. Our theme is, do pieces of the puzzle fit together individual policies that make up California's decarbonization plan? So the agenda is, we'll do club business and announcements first. Uh, then we'll preview future PVDEMS meetings and we'll have our three speakers, uh, which I'll introduce uh, in a few minutes. Uh, hello, spring. Today's the first day of spring. Just should bring a smile to everybody's face. Okay, let's go on. Uh, so before I do this chart, I do want to uh, have Connie talk about the uh, status of the nominating committee, Palos Verdes Democrats nominating committee. Yeah, thank you. Um, the nominating committee contacted all of the uh, current um, members of the board, the, the elected officers and the standing committee chairs uh, to see who is uh, interested in returning to their current position or if they were interested in moving to a different position. And after that, now we know which positions we need to fill and they are first vice president and then a uh, newsletter chairperson, um, publicity, uh, hospitality, and that's it. So um, these actually are kind of um, low impact positions, meaning low intensity positions, meaning um, you can do them fairly easily. They're, they're not um, as much work as some of the other positions, like, you know, Anne is doing this awesome job in program chair, and thank God she's willing to continue uh, uh, with some help, and we got her that. Um, but um, some of these others are a great way to join the board and um, become a, a leader locally here in the Democratic community. The position I'm most interested in filling is first vice president <laughs> because that position is president elect. So if you're interested in becoming a leader quickly, that's a great slot to take. Uh, it's kind of like uh, president in training and you could be president in a year or two. So think about that. Uh, the other positions, hospitality uh, mostly provides refreshments at our meetings when we meet in person and provide and works on the refreshments for the summer picnic. The newsletter uh, chair position has gotten um, less intense. It used to be very intense, but now we uh, put our, um, our, uh, our video from the last meeting up on our website. And the newsletter person used to write a report of that meeting. Now the video is put up and the newsletter chair will just indicate which topics can be found at which minute marks. And so they don't really have to write anything, which is nice. Um, publicity sends out an email once a month, I think. Um, so those are the three positions or the four positions. So if you're interested in any of those, you can email me and I'll put my email in the chat and, uh, We'll go from there. And then um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that this coming Sunday, the, uh, the 66 Assembly District folks will be having breakfast at Mimi's at 10 a.m. Uh, please come on down and, um, and uh, enjoy the fun because we do have a lot of fun. End, hey. of, end of report. Okay, very good. Um... So a number of us went to the March 12th Torrance City Council event last Saturday. Uh, we co-hosted this forum with, uh, to, do, to have all the candidates come out that share our values and for the June 7th election and to emphasize that, that these candidates get chosen or get elected at the June 7th election. So here I put up a map of uh, where what the uh, districts are and this uh, 2022 is only for districts one, three and five and for mayor. And also I, it was a surprise. I didn't realize also treasurer, uh, Tim Goodman had showed up uh, running for treasurer who he's been in other positions in on the Torrance City Council. Sorry, Ann, I, I just wanted to say it's Tim Goodrich for Thank running for Torrance. Run, yeah, running, running for, for treasurer. treasurer, yeah. Okay, so these are the people that showed up uh, uh, running, uh, you can read their names here. 
Uh, Cliff Newmark was the one who was running for mayor. And then we had a surprise visit from, and actually she, she uh, was there for most of the uh, forum, uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, and she uh, gave a very nice speech. And then at the end, Assembly, uh, Assembly member Al Muratsuchi showed up and gave a very nice speech. So uh, it was a, a good showing of candidates. And if anybody's been driving through Torrance, they can see where a lot of the neighborhoods are doing their own forms and they're publicizing them a lot. So, uh, and I've seen a lot of signs out for, for a number of these candidates. So, uh, you know, hopefully they're, uh, they seem to be doing pretty well getting their publicity out, but they need help. And, and as Asensia said at the beginning, they also need money. And TRAA is going to put leaflets out at some of those events. Uh, the neighborhood associations invited us to put some literature out really it was it's it's very uh motivating to see what the neighborhoods are uh, are doing in terms of candidate form and there's also another uh candidate form uh, hosted by league uh, the torrance league of women voters okay the uh next chart all right so here's uh, a preview of our future meetings in april uh, as you can see, we have a recurring theme of, of climate change, but this one's going to focus more on recycling and climate change. Uh, we have the Gorbology author, Edward Humes, and he'll speak about recycling, including the new one in terms of food waste uh, and its impact to climate change. And then we got a late confirmation that Senator Ben Allen will be able to attend, and he'll speak about his recycling legislation, especially around plastics. And we also will have uh, Palos Verdes High School alumna Tess DeBlanc Knowles. Uh, she graduated in 2006. She's currently working at the White House as a staff person on the Independent Commission on National Security on Artificial Intelligence. And she's going to tell us how she got there and a little bit about the AI report that recently came out. Uh, that will be a virtual meeting. And also, that will be the fourth Sunday of the month, because the third Sunday is uh, Easter Sunday. Then in May, May 15th, this will be our first in-person meeting back at the Peninsula Library community room. Uh, and as Connie was saying earlier, it will be a hybrid meeting and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be successful in making it a hybrid meeting. So the theme of this meeting is uh, a little bit of a combination of conservation and what's happening with the Republican Party. So we're calling it accelerating conservation and decelerating the Republicans. We have uh, Dr. Jennifer Norris. She's Deputy, Deputy Secretary for Biodiversity and Habitat at the California Natural Resources Agency. So she's gonna speak about her leadership on California's 30 by 30 initiative. I just wanted to say this has to do with conserving our land as well as our, the future of moving ahead with climate change. Then we also have author Kevin O'Leary. Now this isn't the famous Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank. Um, he's, but this, he has been on uh, uh, certain projects and has a few books out and he's gonna speak about why is America facing a slow motion coup and shocking and the shocking disloyalty by the Republican Party. Welcome any elected candidates and the new candidates who are on, and they might have left. So, uh, but if they are on, uh, we did have uh, two Superior Court judge candidates on, and I don't know if they. But it, but it looks like a huge dumpling. Did you just take that? We could. Uh, Carol, you need to mute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyway, it was Renee Chang. She was running for Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Office 70. Uh, maybe she, we'll have her back. And then uh, we had- uh, She's here. Oh, is she here? I'm yes. Oh, we uh, just let you introduce yourself. I'm so sorry I didn't get to you at the beginning. And then we'll share our charts. We have a couple other announcements. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Renee Yolanda Chang, and I am running for Superior Court Judge, seat 70. Um, I am a Palos Verdes 
resident. I have been with the district attorney's office for 27 years, and I currently am the supervising DA in the Torrance Courthouse for crimes involving domestic violence, sexual assault, child abuse, child molestation, hate crimes. Um, it's the VIP program, which is called the Victim Impact Program, and we deal with crimes involving particularly vulnerable victims. Um, I am applying for Superior Court Judge because after 27 years, I feel that I have the experience and the perspective uh, and the judgment necessary to be a good judge. Part of my role as a supervising um, DA of BIP is uh, approving and um, uh, approving case settlements, approving court dispositions in cases. And so I have been involved even prior to this in uh, current administration, Gascon administration, um, in restorative justice and in alternatives to incarceration. For years, I've been, uh, I've been approving dispositions and um, authorizing pleas for drug court, for mental health diversion, for ODR, which is a housing program for the unhoused with intensive mental health treatment. I've been authorizing dispos for dual diagnostic live-in programs, for domestic violence counseling, for drug counseling. Um, my family has personally been profoundly affected by drug addiction and incarceration related to drug addiction. Um, and so I believe that uh, this restorative justice program and these alternatives to sentencing are very important. However, that being said, I also think that there are some very serious crimes out there, some bad people doing some bad things. So I do not think that it is a one size fit all solution. Um, in our criminal justice system. So I believe that I have the perspective from both sides. Um, I, in every case, I protect the rights of the criminal defendants. I ensure that their constitutional rights are uh, being protected as well as being a voice for the victims and a voice for community and uh, the safety of our community. And I hope that, um, um, I, I'm just very appreciative that you're uh, letting me be here today, and I just wanted to introduce myself. So thank you very much. Thank you, and I'm so glad you made it through our meeting. Thank you. It was very interesting. Okay. I had to leave to go to another meeting, but then I came back. Yeah, great. Now, I, I had Melissa also on, and um, I saw her face for a moment. And I'm she, here. Oh, okay. I'm Do you want... Just introduce yourself real quick and, and uh, then we'll share charts. Sure, yeah, um, I've been on this meeting before. I'm Melissa Hammond. I'm running for Superior Court Judge, office number 118. And I'm a member of this group and a Democrat lifelong. I live in the South Bay and I work in the South Bay. I'm a deputy district attorney in Torrance, actually with Renee, uh, but I have also worked as a deputy public defender. I'm the only person in my specific race that has worked for the public defender's office. And I've also worked in civil litigation and I've also done administrative hearings when I was in law school before administrative judges, which are um, more healthcare insurance and unemployment insurance kind of claims. So I've done really everything I can at this point. I'm very, I have a very well-rounded legal background and I'm ready to become a judge. In my personal life, I'm also a mother of three and my kids go to public schools in the South Bay. And I have mental health issues, substance abuse issues, uh, developmental delays, all of that within my own family. My grandparents are Holocaust survivors from Poland who came to LA because they thought that they wanted to make a new life for themselves. They lost their families, they lost their homes, they lost everything. And they've always instilled within me that Los Angeles is the best place. And no matter what problems are going on, it's so much better than what they experienced. And that's how I've grown up. And I just wanna do everything I can for my community. That's why I've been in public service for 17 years. And that's why I have 
done community service as well as volunteer volunteer activities. And I've worked for democratic campaign campaigns as well in college. And I worked for the democratic convention. And I've also been endorsed by over 50 superior court judges. So I know it's been a long meeting. I'm not gonna get into more detail about it, but thank you very much. And I hope to have this group support is I have five opponents and it's gonna be a crazy race this year. So I really, really need your support. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for joining us, yes. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the charts we have. We have two more announcements uh, and hope Reggie can share the end of the charts. And, and as we get to the charts, I do wanna make a correction when I was talking about the 3030 initiative, California 3030 initiative, it's for conserving 30% of our lands and coastal waters by 2030. So I just wanted to uh, make sure that was clear. That will be in our next meeting. Okay, so we have Carol Muller uh, wanted to announce this. Um, I wanted you all to be aware of 10,000 Villages um, rug event. Um, we, 10,000 Villages is a fair trade nonprofit. You know, we're not talking politics here, but we are talking values. Um, and once a year, 10,000 Villages has uh, in, imports rugs from Pakistan, all hand knotted. Um, and it's coming up March 24th through the 27th. I know this slide says starts today. Uh, that was referring to uh, the, the rug event that happened in San Pedro, which is just ending today. So um, if you're interested in uh, actual heirloom rugs, please come to our store on Catalina, March 24th through 27th. Thank you. Okay, and then we have one more chart. Um, where is... Oh, maybe you can mute yourself. Okay, so we, uh, on this one, uh, hold a second. So we received this announcement from uh, Richard Foss. He's executive director of Collage and Arts Venue in San Pedro, and it opened in July of 2021. Uh, the address you can see here on the screen Anyway, coming up in mid-April, the collage will be presenting a 12-day show. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the thing he wanted us to announce for today was this April 1st. This is Keith Knight. He's an illustrated, uh, he's given an illustrated talk on how his cartoons blend humor and agitation for social change. It looks very interesting. And, uh, and he's looking to uh, get, again, this has having to do with values and what we support. Uh, we thought this would be a good, quote, walk, woke talk for our members to uh, be aware of. But what he also wanted me to let you know is coming up in mid-April, it's not on their website yet, they're still working it, they're going to present a 12-day show of Ukrainian art and culture to push back against Putin's lie that the Ukrainians have no art and culture of their own. And they're going to have antique embroidered textiles, original paintings by mid-century master of Ukrainian fine art, concert, uh, concerts of their music, and Ukrainian traditional tunes, and a collection of Ukrainian Easter eggs already are lined up. So uh, I was not aware of uh, this venue, and so uh, he, he reached out to us to, to give him a shout out, and here it is. So you can... Uh, go to this uh, website and we'll post it also on our, in our newsletter and uh, April 1st starts this show. Okay, we can unshare and uh, we have five minutes. How about that? <laughs> so uh, any other uh, comments or any other elected officials that I, that I missed? I wanted to, Anne, I wanted to uh, bring up the, uh, I think there is something going on tomorrow for the Torrance City Council, right? And then this, the uh, Congresswoman will be there. Uh, that's tomorrow morning. Just got that uh, email from uh, Jimmy Gao. Do you guys know about that? I don't even know where it is. It doesn't say that you have to register, no address or anything like that. Are you aware of that? No. Oh, uh, I'm not, since I'm not, I'm, let's, let's move on. Um, we do have something here in chat, and Allison, you should bring it up because I didn't know about the Matt Brock thing from PBUSD. 
um, Sarah Dean's running as well as Ami Gandhi. She's going to run again. Um, I don't think they filed, so it's not really official yet. Maybe you could, there are four positions open? There's four positions open. Yes, one of the positions is, is for a two-year term and three of them are for uh, four-year terms. Okay, so as we get, we, we talked about where the, where they're not even, we don't even know who's going to run until mid-July through August. So when Correct. we get, when we get to know, uh, we'll, we'll give this more coverage. Out of okay. curiosity, what are the requirements? Uh, what are the qualifications needed to run for such a position? Know about the school district. Yeah, basically. Be a registered voter. All right. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, indeed. I mean, there's nothing apart from residency and being familiar with the fact that it's a school uh, that. Uh, That's not going to get you elected, though. <laughs> and oh, what Jacinta was talking about, Jimmy said it was a little cryptic, but it said that ten, oh, you can't say at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning at, at the Torrance Council Chambers. Uh, Representative um, Waters is going to be there. Um, it's a little cryptic what, what Jimmy said, but he did post it on the Torrance Dem Club Facebook page. I'm sure that's what Jacinta saw. He just says, join us uh, 10 a.m. Monday, March 21st at Torrance City Hall, as we welcome our representative for three council districts in Torrance, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, for her announcement about the city. That's very cryptic announcement about the city. But that's probably what you saw, Jacinta. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's what I was said. So Torrance City City Hall? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so, any other uh, announcements? Uh, it's, it's, it's been a very uh, interesting meeting. I know I learned a lot. We will have this uh, summarized and you'll see the video in our newsletter. And uh, thank you all for for joining us, it's uh, you know this, it's an important topic, and we need to solve the problem. I do want to say one last thing. Uh, I think I was reading. I don't know if it's Taft, California, but you know they're using the Ukraine war to say we have to drill from you know or get the refineries back online and drill for more oil, and uh, that is so far from the truth. And I hope people. Yes, well, see, see the end of, you know, see that that's a lie. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyway, have a great end of the day, Sunday. Happy spring. Mm -hmm. uh, equal day, equal day, equal night. A little bit. <laughs> Better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great care. job. Thank you, Ann. Great meeting. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Good job, Thank you so much again, guys. Great job, Reggie. Bye. Thank you, Ann. Good job. Thank you, Hassan.